Welcome to our special segment where we talk about all matters health, even controversial topics that many would want to brush under the carpet, but we ensure that we discuss it so that your health is your wealth and that's how it remains. We call it Health Boost with me and Sneha Mordani, who has all the expert views on what's been happening, what are the trends, should you jump in on that trend or not. Now here's what I noticed, Sneha, in the mm -hmm. past few months, for example, yes. or years, there's an increasing conversation about uh, young couples who are reporting loss of intimacy, sexual yes. intimacy, yes. but there are also young women in their early 20s mm. who are reporting issues of infertility, mm. what you would hear likely in your 50s. Yes, absolutely. What's happening? Because I, I know when I was researching and reading about it, Sneha, someone told me it's related to endocrine disruptors, yes. endocrine system. How is that connected? Is this right. not uncommon? Is this becoming more of a bigger issue? You know, it is, uh, it's absolutely not uncommon and this is, wow. I think, uh, the problem that modern lifestyle has uh, thrown at us, Pooja. Uh, let me tell you that the endocrine hmm. system is actually our body system made up of glands uh, that in fact releases hormones, as you know, which affects every single organ of your body. So when you talk about the endocrine system, that system's balance has to be maintained, right? Imagine it... It has glands that are producing hormones which affect all your organs and you mentioned uh, one's sex drive, also the fact that uh, infertility is, some, is what younger women are battling. Uh, all of this is because of the mess up that we see in our endocrine system and we need to talk about it uh, much, much more and the reason is because a lot of people say that Look, uh, you know, I don't smoke, I don't drink, uh, but still I'm having uh, infertility. A lot of uh, men are talking about infertility as well. Uh, you know, no semen in the sperm. Doctors are reporting this in young men as young as 25 and 28 uh, when uh, they're not being able to, in fact, establish that uh, intimacy with their partner. What really is going wrong? Uh, you know, why are young girls hitting puberty at 10 and 11? All of this has got to do with the disruptions in the endocrine system. We'll talk about what these disruptors are. Certainly these are things around us and I want to touch upon that as well. These are chemicals found in regular products so you don't have to be smoking but if you're drinking water from a plastic bottle that has BPA then you are messing around with your endocrine system. First a look at this report. Much is always spoken about body detox but doing it the right way is essential. If one does it in a haphazard way, it can cause more harm than good. And hence, do it with a well-qualified doctor or go the ancient Indian Ayurvedic way. If somebody feels good with ketogenic, others may not feel good. It depends on who you are and what you need. How is your gut health? How is your metabolism? What's your constitution? Accordingly, you should choose your diet. Detoxification is often necessary for the body. An Ayurvedic detox focuses on the removal of unwanted toxins from the body. As for Ayurveda, there are three doshas and detoxing according to your dosha type is absolutely essential. They are Bata, Pitta and Kapha. Your gut health is key. If your body has the Kapha dosha, which means you are prone to allergies, respiratory allergies, have sinusitis or get bloated easily or have fibroids, PCOS, hormonal imbalances, here is how you need to detox. If you are more Kapha type, which means you, are, you get a lot of allergy, respiratory allergies easily, sinuses or you get bloated, uh, grow your weight very easily, Stay away from gluten and dairy, red meat completely. If you are pitta predominant, which means that you have a quote-unquote hot constitution, which means prone to acid reflux, headaches with skin issues intermittently, here is what you can do. If you are pitta predominant, which means you are hot constitution, you have acid reflux or burning and sometimes you get skin problems, then you should stay away from sour, fermented and spicy food completely. And lastly, if your body is the vata type, which means you suffer from insomnia, depression, have chronic joint pains, body aches, chronic fatigue, etc. You must avoid some foods completely as per Ayurveda. If you are vata type where you feel always pain, joints pain, aching, 
chronic fatigue, tiredness all the time, this is vata symptoms, then stay away from raw food, heavy beans which are bloating and creating gases. And regardless of which dosha you belong to, some foods are just a strict no-no for better gut health. Make sure that whatever you eat is not spoiling your digestion. So every junk food, refined food, white sugar, deep fried, red meat, wheat, everything is depleting our digestion. The best detox is the one that improves your gut health, improves your metabolism and helps you get rid of toxins. And ancient Ayurveda has the answers. So this should be the focus. Here is the plan. First day, do ginger, cumin and coriander water fasting. If you cannot do water fasting, skip this day. Next three days, liquidy mung bean soup fasting. Green mung beans are alkaline. So they remove acidity and they also stimulate metabolism, gut health. And finally, here is how to conclude your Ayurvedic detox. Lastly, three days. So this is 10 days fasting. Last three days will be a bit solid uh, mung and vegetables. So you can take sauteed vegetables with mung soup or you can take mung chaat with mung, uh, vegetable soup, something like this. And then slowly you can go into the normal diet. Your chronic problems will begin to get better and better. So if you live a fast life and cannot take the time out for a punch karma, follow the Ayurvedic doctor's advice and detox at home. In New Delhi, Chaiti Narula for India Today.